Wednesday at Home Series 5 Things, where we highlight five different activities, questions, or other recommendations surrounding a single book. Today's book is Bear Came Along by Richard T. Morris and illustrated by Lewin Pham. Bear Came Along is a story that starts with a river. Along come lots of friends who experience the river together. Each has their own feelings and reasons for joining the adventure ahead. Curiosity, loneliness, anxiety, confidence, excitement, disrupted, contentedness. Poor dog. <laughs> but all fine friendships help move you along no matter what. And the story ends again with a river and lots and lots of friends. You might not have access to this particular story, but don't worry, our digital collection is open and available for checkout anytime. Want stories about friendship or feelings or bears? We have those! Stay tuned, there will be some suggestions at the end of this video for titles you can check out now. Okay, here are five things you can try at home. Thing one. I love looking at the art and picture books. In this particular book, I love the expressions on the animals' faces. Here is one of my favorite. Who? Here's your challenge. Pick a picture book from your collection or from one of the digital resources available. Hoopla is particularly great for picture books. And without reading the story, try to analyze how the characters are feeling based on their facial expressions. Talk about why you think they feel that way. Thing too. This story takes place by a river, so the animals you see are likely to live in that kind of environment. Who do you think you would meet if a story took place near an ocean? Who would you choose to start off the animal chain? I think I would choose a crab. Thing three. It's time for Builder Reader Highlight! Our five Builder Reader activities are talk, sing, read, write, and play. These are activities we can do every single day to build our little readers and their little reader brain. Today's Builder Reader activity is singing! <laughs> Singing is a great activity to help build our language skills. A fun song you can sing about a bear goes like this. Gur gur went the big brown bear one day. Gur gur went the big brown bear. Gur gur went the big brown bear one day and they all went gur gur gur. But we know bears go huggy huggy hug. Huggy huggy hug. Huggy huggy hug. We know bears go. Huggy, huggy, hug, they don't say grr, grr, grr. <laughs> Thing four. In the story, Bear and Friends float down the river on a log. Did you know that logs can sometimes float? What kinds of things do you think float? Try this experiment. Click, say, five to ten different things around your house. We you want them to be small. Think coins and paper clips and not cell phones or books. Fill the sink or bathtub with an inch or two of water. And gently place the item in the water to see if it floats or sinks. Sounds kind of fun. Thing five. Today's activities are best served with a classic snack, ants on a log. If you are not familiar, this snack is traditionally made with peanut butter, slathered on a celery stick with raisins on the top. Not a fan of celery? Try apple slices. Not a fan of peanut butter? What about chocolate hazelnut spread? Mm, chocolate yum. Not a fan of raisins? There's many chocolate chips. The possibilities are endless. Okay, that's it for me. Thank you for watching. Here are a few titles in our digital collection you might enjoy. Stay safe, everyone. Hello, and welcome back to the Hardesty at Home series, Five Things, where we highlight five different things, activities, questions, or other recommendations surrounding a single book. Today's book is The Adventures of Beagle, The Unimaginary Friend by Dan Santat. This is a story about Beagle, an imaginary friend who is waiting for a friend to imagine him up. It was taking a while, so he did the unimaginable. He went to find his friend for himself, until he reached the real world. The real world was a strange place, but he eventually found a place full of life. But he still could not find his person until and they lived happily ever after this title is available to put on hold at tulsalibrary.org and stay tuned until the end for more suggestions or similar titles you can place on hold or check out online thing one you might also like a story called maryland's monster by michelle knudsen in maryland's world all children get friends that just so happen to be monsters 
Marilyn decides to search for her monster, even though she's supposed to wait to let the monster choose her. It's a really great story, and you can put it on hold to read for yourself, or you can listen to it read to you by Julie Andrews! <laughs> Julie's Library Storytime with Julie Andrews podcast is from American Public Media and is available online through Apple Podcasts and wherever podcasts are provided. There is a link to the Maryland's Monster episode in the description. Thing too. Beagle does a lot of things on his own that seem like they would be scary. He sails alone across the world, he climbs a really tall tree, but he finds courage to do these things just by thinking of the friend he might find if he goes through with them. Now this is the part of the activity that's a little scary too, so grab a close friend to help you out with this one and hug it close. I want you to think of something that scares you. The dark, maybe? Now I want you to think of something that can combat the scary thing. Say you come up with a character called the Knight of Light. Play pretend that the Knight of Light is there with you, or that you or your friend are the Knight of Light, and battle the darkness. Playing pretend can help us conquer our fears, and having a friend there can also help you along too. Thing three. It's time for... The five Builder Reader activities are talk, sing, read, write, and play. These are activities we can do every single day to build our little readers and their little reader brains. Today's highlight is on writing! Drawing is a great way to practice our writing skills by providing a powerful creative outlet that increases our imaginations and develops creative problem solving. Here's an activity you can try that helps practice writing and includes all of those groovy benefits as well. Try drawing your imaginary friend. What does your friend look like? Like you? Like an animal? Like a totally mixed up galaxy creature with a funny nose and 12 arms? Maybe. This is mine. It's a fairy turtle. Because why not? Children become confident writers through visual storytelling activities like this. Thing four. I have posted a video about this before, but it's such a fun activity, I'm gonna suggest it again. Go on a walk around your neighborhood. Try to spot all of the colors of the rainbow. Remember these colors are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Or sometimes just purple if you aren't being too technical. Or hey, how many different shades of purple can you find? That might be a fun one. Thing five. Today's activities are sure to make you hungry. Don't you just love the colors of this book? They remind me of a beautiful rainbow fruit salad. Top it with some marshmallow fluff or whipped cream for a little something extra for your sweet tooth. Okay, that's it for me. Thank you for watching. Here are a few titles available to put on hold or in our digital collection you might enjoy. Stay safe, everyone. Hello, and welcome to the Hard to Stay at Home series, Five Things, where we highlight five different activities, questions, or other recommendations surrounding a single book. Today's book is Hare and Tortoise by Alison Murray. This is a retelling of one of Aesop's classic fables, The Hare and the Tortoise. In this story, Hare and the Tortoise have a race. Bye. Hare is so confident in his abilities that he stops for a little snack in a patch of carrots and has a little nap under the shady tree. Through sheer determination to finish, Tortoise okay. wins the race. Yay, Tortoise! Now this is just one retelling of the story. If this version is not available to you, check out our digital collection at tulsalibrary.org for more versions of Aesop's fables you can read from home. There will be some suggestions at the end of this video for titles and formats to check out. Here are five things, questions, activities, and other resources you can do at home together. Thing one. Alison Murray is the author and illustrator of Hair and Tortoise. I really like the artistic style of this book. It's vibrant and minimalist, and I really like the visible brush strokes that provide texture for the illustrations. You see on here? Cool, huh? On Alison Murray's website, she has two fun activities you can do on her resources page. One is a genus chart, much like one you see here, about hair. And the other is a dice game based on this illustration. Check out the description for the link to those. Thing too! After reading or relaying the story of the hare and the tortoise, talk about how the story could have changed if the hare had not taken a nap. How do you think the hare would have behaved at the finish line? What about if the tortoise had quit? Thing three. It's time for Build a Reader Highlight. 
The five Builder Reader activities are talk, sing, read, write, and play. These are activities we can do every single day to build our little readers and their little reader brains. Today's highlighted Builder Reader activity is play. Play is a great way to practice what we are learning from other sources, like this book. Because when we are playing and having fun, we are learning. A great play activity you can try is to get across the yard, or the living room, or the hallway, or your apartment, or wherever you're living, or have space to move, as long as we're being very careful. Try to get from point A to point B as quickly as possible. But here's the challenge. Do it without running. Thing four. Check out this fun song called Fast and Slow by the Lori Berkner Band. Sing and dance along going very fast, like a rabbit, and very slow, like a turtle. It's available on the band's Rocket Ship Run album, available on Hoopla. Thing five. All right, now, after all that learning, singing, dancing, and playing, you might have worked up an appetite for a snack. Today's activities are best served with carrot sticks and a side of humility. I mean hummus. Okay, that's all for me. Thank you for watching, and here are a few titles in our digital collection you might enjoy. Stay safe, everyone. Hello, and welcome back to the series Five Things, where we highlight five different things, activities, or other recommendations surrounding a single book. I'm Julia from the Hardesty Regional Library, and let's get to this. Today's book is Stregonona by Tommy De Paula. This story is about an old witch who helped out the people in her village a lot. One day, she hired Big Anthony to help her with her house and only gave him one rule. Do not touch the pasta pot. Big Anthony agreed and worked hard for Streganona. One day, he saw something amazing. Streganona was singing a song and up popped cooked pasta from the pot. He was so excited that he had to go tell the villagers all about it. The villagers did not believe him, so Big Anthony did exactly what he said he would not do. Do you remember what that is? That's right. He touched the pot. Very soon, things started to spiral out of control. He couldn't stop it. Luckily, Stregonona came just in time to help stop the pasta from taking over the village. Big Anthony had to fix his mistake by eating up all the trouble he caused. The end. Poor Big Anthony. <laughs> you can place a hold on Stregonona at TulsaLibrary.org, and while you're there, check out other Tommy DePaula titles, including more Stregonona and Big Anthony adventures. There will be more suggestions for titles to check out at the end of this video. Okay, here are five questions, activities, or other resources you can do related to Stregonona. Thing one. I have always loved the way the pasta looks in this book. I love that with just a few big wavy lines and some slightly lighter lines and some ends that taper off in different lengths and directions. See? It makes the pasta look so lively. I remember trying to draw it over and over again on sheets of paper when I was little. Why not give that a try? Draw a page full of pasta. I started some right here. Thing two. Try dancing and singing along with this song. Noodles and Butter by Casper Baby Pants. Noodles and butter, noodles and butter. That is my favorite treat. Is your favorite treat butter and noodles? The link to Casper Baby Pants performing this song is in the description. Check out the other songs while you're there. He's been doing a cool series called The Casper Baby Pants Tiny Song Jukebox. and has so many wonderful songs you're sure to love. We have some CDs you can put on hold too. Mm -hmm. Thing three. It's time for Build a Reader Highlight. The five Builder Reader activities are talk, sing, read, write, and play. These are things we can do every single day to build our little readers and their little reader brains. Today's highlight is talking. Talking together can help increase vocabulary and make reading comprehension easier on down the road. Good on down, good on down the road. In this book, Stregonona sings a special song to make the pasta boil up from the pasta pot. What would you like to see boil up? Applesauce? Cookies? Pepperoni pizza? Think about what you would like most to boil up from the pot and talk it over with your grown-up. Try to come up with a couple of lines from a song to help bring your favorite food out of the pot. You will need to come up with rhyming words. These are words that have a similar sound like toss and sauce. Here's one I just made up. 
Nothing but air in night toss so I can enjoy some applesauce. Thing four. Make some macaroni necklaces. For this activity, you will need some pasta with a hole in the center. Large macaroni works great for this. And a string. Take it at least 12 inches or so. String the dry pasta onto the string and tie the string together. Slip it over your head and voila! Pasta necklace! You can even get a little fancy and paint the pasta before you string it on. Make sure to let the paint dry before proceeding. Oh, and best practice, don't eat the pasta once you started crafting with it. Thing five. Today's activities are best served with pasta, of course. How do you like your pasta? I like a cool pasta salad with tomatoes and broccolis and carrot mixed in. I top it with some zesty Italian dressing. Such a good side or a snack on a hot summer day. Mm. Okay, that's it for me. Thank you for watching. Here are more suggestions for you to check out from our collections at TulsaLibrary.org. Be kind, love each other, eat some pasta, and stay safe everyone. And welcome back to the series Five Things, where we highlight five different things, activities, or other recommendations on a single book. I'm Julia from the Hardesty Regional Library, and let's get to this. Today's book is The Little Red Fort by local author and teacher Brenda Meyer, with pictures by Sonia Sanchez. This is another retelling of a classic tale, The Little Red Hen. Originally published in St. Nicholas Magazine in 1874 by Mary Mapes Dodge. The original tale follows a little red hen who seeks help from other animals in various tasks in making bread, all the way from seed to grain to freshly baked bread. The other animals did not want to help her until it was time to eat that delicious smelling bread, but she said, uh, no thank you, I'm going to eat it all myself since I did all the work. And she did. This book follows a little girl named Ruby. That's her. Ruby had a great idea. She was going to build something. When she asked her brothers for help, they laughed at her and told her, I don't know how to build anything. And Ruby did exactly what you should do in a situation like this. She said, then I'll learn. And she did. As the project got underway, Ruby would periodically ask for her brother's help in various tasks related to building this fort. But every time they just laughed and said, no, not right now. When the fort was eventually finished, they all wanted to play in it. Ruby, who did all the work by herself, said she would just play in it by herself. The boys decided they may have been wrong and worked on some peace offerings to spruce up the fort. In the end, Ruby shared her fort and a full plate of delicious smelling cookies with her brothers. The end. If you like this story, you can place a hold on it at TulsaLibrary.org. And stay tuned at the end of the video where you'll find suggestions for books like this one. Okay, here are five things, questions, activities, or other recommendations you can do on The Little Red Fort. Thing one. This idea comes from the book itself. Build a fort! A sofa fort, a kitchen chair fort, a snow fort, not probably in the middle of summer in Oklahoma in general, but still a good idea, or a bunk bed fort. Use couches, cushions, chairs, blankets. Build yourself a cozy fort where you can read this book over and over and over again. Let's do that right now, shall we? Thing two, try this experiment. Choose an activity that you haven't tried before. This can be anything from building the fort in thing one to building a little house or home for fairies and gnomes. Sit down and plan out what the final project will look like. Draw up the plans just like Ruby. Ask your grown up or someone who is close to you to do the same. After you both finish, compare the two plans. How different are they? From here, you can work together to make a final product that involves both of your ideas. Also, bonus thing 2.5, Miss Marine and I have done an entire video series called Houses and Homes for Fairies and Gnomes, where we go over some tips on building, designing, and decorating little fun tiny houses. The whole series is up now on Facebook. Go check it out. Thing three. It's time for... 
stuff by Ability Reader activities are talk, sing, read, write, and play. These are activities we can do every single day to build our little readers and their little reader brains. Today's Builder Reader activity is reading. Reading out loud remains the single most effective way to help children become readers. Make reading and books a part of your normal daily routine. A fun reading activity to try is to find several different versions of this story and see what they have in common or what they have different from each other. Here are a few that the library has if you want to check these out too. Thing four. Do you know what this is? What about this? Or these? Finding out about tools and how they work is a really fun way to pass an afternoon. Ask your grown person to show you some of the tools you have in the house, and you can even see if they will let you hold them. Please only under adult supervision. And while you're doing that, you can listen to Mouse in My Toolbox by the Lori Berkner Band. This song is available on their Rocket Ship Run album, as well as the Ultimate Lori Berkner Band Collection album. Both of these are available on Hoopla. Thing five. Today's activities are best served with, oh, why not, a full plate of warm chocolate chip cookies. Mmm, they taste best in your homemade fort. That's science. Okay, that's it for me and the Little Red Fort. Thank you for watching. Here are some other titles you might enjoy from our collections at the Tulsa City County Library. And welcome back to the series, Five Things, where we highlight five different things, activities, questions, or other recommendations on a single book. Today's book is The Very Last Castle by Travis Yonker, with pictures by Mark Pett. The Very Last Castle is about a girl in a castle and the lone guard who stands there. The townspeople had a lot of ideas about what was in the castle, like monsters, giants, snakes, but Ib thought it might be something else. One day, the guard was not at his post, so Ib decided to investigate. She heard and ran away. Later, she receives a letter inviting her back to the castle. This time, the doors opened. Ib met the guard, and they toured all around the castle. Ib is asked by the guard to be part of the castle. In return, she asks for a simple request. The end. If you like this story, you can place a hold on it at tulsalibrary.org, and stay tuned at the end of this video for more suggestions or titles like this one. Okay, here are five things, questions, activities, or other recommendations you can do on The Very Last Castle. Thing one. Hey, does this story sound familiar to you? Remind you of anything? Although it is a different story, it shares some similarities with another very famous book and movie. I will give you some clues. There's a contest. There is some candy. There's a If you guessed Charlie in the Chocolate Factory, you're right. If you guessed Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory, you're also right. The difference between those two are the book title written by Ruel Dahl in 1964 and the 1971 movie. In 2005, there was another movie adaptation too, with Johnny Depp, um, which reverted back to the original title, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. This is an excellent opportunity for some family read aloud time. Do you know reading aloud together as a family can help foster the love of reading? Why not start a new or continue in an already established tradition of reading aloud together with reading Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? It's a fun story and you can get it in many different formats at the library. We have copies of both movies as well. You can talk about the similarities and differences between the different versions of Charlie or Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory and the similarities and differences between that story and this one. Thing too. Tired of the stones you throw into castle moats always going Look. Here's a cool science lesson just for you. Mark Rober is a former NASA engineer who builds a lot of really, really cool things, including a rock launcher for science. I know, right? In the video I suggest, 
He builds a machine to try to figure out the best way to throw a rock to get the ultimate number of rock skips. If you find yourself near a lake or a river this summer, perfect your skill by learning the technique he found was the best to get the maximum amount of skips. Maybe learn a little science along the way. Thing three. It's time for Builder Reader Highlight! The five Builder Reader activities are talk, sing, read, write, and play. These are activities we can do every single day to build our little readers and their little reader brains. Today's Builder Reader Highlight is talking! We are focusing on all three because today we are talking about onomatopoeias. That's a big fun word, isn't it? Onomatopoeia. And onomatopoeia is a word that is also a sound. This can be a little confusing, but there are so many words that fall into the category, like the ones in this book. You can also find a lot of these in comic books, things like POW! Think of a few onomatopoeias on your own. Say them out loud a few times. Maybe even practice some really cool actions while doing so. It helps. Like, zap, and pow, and bang! <laughs> then create a comic book action splat from your favorite word that you have come up with. As always, if you need help spelling or thinking of words, talk to a grown person. They can help. Thing four. What is your favorite castle? What? You don't have one? Did you know there are real castles still standing today? Yeah. Ask your grown-up to help you search for some really cool real-life castles and maybe comment below what your favorite one is you found. And sure, if your favorite castle is Cinderella's castle or Hogwarts, that totally counts because the same. But also maybe find some outside of fiction too. Thing five. Today's activities are best served with castles made out of food. Have you ever made a castle out of your mashed potatoes? I mean, um, you should not play with your food. Parents, look over there! Okay, now that they're distracted, you should totally make a castle out of your mashed potatoes. You can try it with other foods too. How tall can you build a pretzel tower? All right, that's it for me and the very last castle. Thank you for watching. Here are some other titles you might enjoy.